I'm not really sure what compelled me to want to go as fast as I can. As far back as I can remember, I liked things with wheels or engines. I liked being in motion. I remember getting my first car, the freedom to go to new places, and then as the years went by, the addiction continued, and I found Super Sport Motorcycles. In my opinion, it's the purest form of motorsports there is. Lightweight and nimble, a mix of physical activity to wrestle it down a track as much as it is a balancing act of finesse and inputs to the machine. With engines revving to over 14,000 RPM and top speeds of 150 miles per hour or more for the average track day junkie, motorcycle racing is as exhilarating as it is dangerous, and I should know. This particular model I'm riding today, Triumph's Daytona 675R, has been my drug of choice for years now. I've owned three of them, and they've almost killed me twice. Almost. Today, you're coming along with me to beat my personal record on Eagles Canyon Raceway, my home course, and a 2.7 mile racetrack in North Texas. There's a bit of a twist towards the end, so stick around. I tried to film as much as possible of the process, so I hope you enjoy this look into the weekend of a track day junkie and aspiring club racer. I'll take you through my thought processes as I do sessions, some of the off the bike stuff, and hopefully by the end of it, a celebratory shot of my new personal record. And if not, maybe a cliche montage where I discuss the validity of the journey over achieving a goal. <laughs> ah, f*** that. I'm trying to beat this PR. Let's do this. Much chicken strip was on my second lap, sneaking up on it, just f***ing washed out and disappeared. just ran our first warm-up session uh, and normally in my warm-ups I see like a 218 217 type of thing um, doing like a 219 today so not the best but again it's the first session I'm warming up the bikes warming up we're all getting we're all getting familiar again with each other so it should be okay uh, but let's go and have some fun on our motorcycle <laughs> Guys, we just finished up session number two on track. Was able to put down a 216.2. Feeling pretty good about that. Um, I think that with just a little bit more refinement on technique, I can either session three or four get back down to like the 214, 213 range, which is my PR originally. And then that's when the fun starts start happening. And I'm, you know, hopefully going to start edging my way up towards that 210 because uh, it's 210 to Yammy. Don't forget, that's the title of the episode. <laughs> So one thing that's always been an issue for me ever since I've started doing track days is just my overall inputs on the bars. Um, I've done a lot of core exercises, I've done a lot of you know training to get my uh, my legs really set up and really carrying the weight, but for some reason as the laps kind of go on, I start getting lazier and my inputs just end up getting super heavy on the bars. And I know that that's what's causing the bike to feel kind of funny. Uh, I'd really like to dial in my brake pressure as well. I feel like my brake pressure isn't consistent and hard and bitey uh, and with enough pressure on it as I'm coming in because sometimes I'm coming in after a long straight and I'm braking and I feel like I'm doing a lot of braking, but in reality, I'm not slowing down all that much as I know I could. And then other times I'm coming in way too hot and then the front of the bike starts like dancing around. I start feeling some real weirdness out of it, just kind of below the corner. Um, so I want much more consistent kind of braking that would be really, really good to work on.
Alrighty guys, so pretty successful first kind of shakedown sessions with the new race prep Daytona. Uh, I'm finding that there's two main things that are happening. Uh, so we got the suspension dialed in and because there was way too much preload in the rear, uh, we ended up softening up that preload and then dialing in a little bit of compression and rebound in the front, getting the preload set up in the front correctly. And basically TLDR on the suspension, it turns in a little bit slower. It holds the line really, really well, but it does turn in a little bit slower. So I'm still getting used to that. Uh, the other thing that changed is going back to the stock gearing on this bike. Uh, I thought that there were just stock sprockets on this motorcycle, and so I reordered a set of stock Triumph uh, sprockets and chains from direct from Triumph. I didn't want to do aftermarket sprockets and this and that. I just want to keep it stock because I like the way it felt. But it turns out that these sprockets are actually uh, one tooth lower in the rear, or maybe it's two teeth. I can't remember exactly. And so the gearing feels a little different on this bike. Um, there's several moments on this track where intuitively I end up shifting and minding my brake zones based off my shift points and not actually checking my speed. And so I had to readjust to a couple corners where I'd go up to fourth or third and now I just stay in second because I've got the little bit of extra uh, wiggle room there. And it's a two-sided sword because on the one hand, it's nicer to stay in one gear because that means that you don't have to spend time downshifting and you can just kind of carry the speed out. On the other hand, you are losing acceleration. So I do feel that the bike is pulling less hard out of corners because it's not as aggressively geared. So we're going to come back the next day and hopefully at least get back down to our personal record of 213, if not get closer to 212, 211, which I think is a realistic goal that I can set here. Obviously, my goal is 210. I would love to see a 210 on the lap timer. That's my, my, my goal for this whole excursion. But I feel like we're going to end up on the best of best, like a 211.5, I think is right that butter zone for a new PB. Uh, so yeah, I will now cut to the next day. Hey everybody, welcome to day two. This is a bit of a weird situation because normally when I come up here to Eagles Canyon, I do back-to-back uh, -back track days, but because of all this coronavirus stuff, um, I got scheduled on Friday and then Sunday. So what am I doing today? Uh, mostly I'm relaxing. I slept in nice and late so I could rest up. And now I'm actually looking over some of the data we collected yesterday from the lap timer and the footage we got on the GoPro. Uh, when I do my track days, normally I like to film and to get my lap timer going so that I can have visual data and then also uh, objective data from speed, lean, all kinds of cool stuff that the lap timer can produce. I might come back from a lap and be like, okay, I was really heavy on the bars and I felt like I couldn't turn in right. And then I might look at the data and be like, okay, right here, turn 14. If I just give it a little bit more gas, I can probably uh, squeeze out, you know, maybe a half a second right there. And then we can get closer to our time. Combining all those things together helps you develop up a better sense of where you need to be uh, for your lap times and um, also the solo 2 has a really cool application called the race studio 2 where you can boot it up and then look and compare your lap times uh, versus your fastest one and then you can see exactly where you're fastest and where you're making up time so let's take a look at that really quick so as you can see right here, this is our track map. This is Eagles Canyon's uh, 2.7 mile course, all turns of it. And then over here on the right is our speed. Uh, I like looking at speed because it's the best indicator of where you can find time on a racetrack. Uh, you can look at other factors over here like uh, lean angle, uh, deceleration in terms of G's, uh, all kinds of stuff, but I find that speed is definitely the most important one because uh, a higher average speed and a higher top speed will denote a faster lap time. Uh, a more advanced um, lap timer can probably get you, you know, throttle position, braking pressure, all kinds of really advanced features, but this little solo two here uh, is a little bit more bare bones and I don't mind it. This gives me enough to work off of. So what I can do here is I can click to see, okay, right over here, I'm seeing that the red line is way bigger than the green one. Uh, it looks like the GPS speed for this lap over here, lap number two, where I did a 215 was 52 miles per hour. And then on the second lap where I did 214.9, it was 66 miles per hour. So a huge difference in speed right over here in this section. And that's right after the back straight coming in on the left-hand turn. So I must be picking up a lot more throttle right in here and finding more uh, speed right in between these corners. Because from a lot of research that I've done and a lot of uh, thinking that I've done around my own lap times, I found that it's not really corner speed where you go faster. Uh, corner speed definitely helps, but actually 
it's all the space in between the corners where you can give a lot more gas or a lot more brakes. That's really, really where you find the time. As, as far as all the lap times I've seen of my own that I go faster, I'm always faster in these little spaces between the corners. You can actually see right here that my cornering speed and my braking is actually super consistent between these two laps. It's only in a couple places where I ended up picking up the throttle a little bit more and I found a whole second just basically right in this area. Um, so a lap timer like this in conjunction with something like a GoPro is definitely what you want to do if you're trying to objectively get better at riding on the track uh, alongside working with an instructor and doing that kind of stuff. Alrighty guys, welcome to day three. Uh, I've done two sessions so far on the bike. Uh, first warm-up session was on the long course, was feeling really good. Pulled out a 217, just warming up, which I felt really good about, so feeling good about that. Thought I was gonna start chopping away the time, but unfortunately, to add a little bit of a drama and spice to this, uh, you know, things do happen on track, and so there uh, was a street car, because here on Eagles Canyon, we run motorcycle car, motorcycle car, motorcycle car, kind of staggered like that uh, to get all the members going. And there was a street car that went out and kind of spilled its guts all over uh, turn seven, eight, and nine. So coolant everywhere. Uh, I think a little bit of oil too. They were out there cleaning it up. And so an executive decision was made and we decided to switch to the short course. So it's no longer 210 to Yami. It is 119 to Yami because that's my old personal record uh, for the short course, if I remember correctly. So today, the goal now is to get under a 119 on the short course. There's a really fast guy here who's pulling about a 115, and I want to see if I can tow him and follow him a little bit and see what his lines are, where he's picking up speed. I'll show you here on the map and kind of point it out. There's a section on the short course that um, is quite tricky because it's kind of like an undulating line, and there's no real good way to approach it. You just have to try to draw a straight line as fast as possible through it and I think that's where I'm gonna make up pretty much all of my time um, because everything else in the short course is the same as the long course except that little crossover section. So we're gonna get back on the bike and see what we can do.
right, guys, so we, we kind of did it. Um, I've never seen anything close to under a 120 uh, here on the short course, and I just cracked out a 119.5, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, that was partly due to me following a very, very fast guy here at Eagles Canyon Raceway called Josh. Josh, if you're watching this video, thank you. I know you waited for me to come around so I could tow you a little bit, and I saw you looking back, and it's hilarious thinking that you're going that's slow that you can just kind of casually look back while I'm following you, but that was very, very helpful, and thank you. A um, couple things I noticed uh, while I was out there setting a new PR is that, you know, when you're braking really heavy, it's okay to let the front, you know, the bike's gonna move a little bit. Um, I've started noticing that as, you know, you pick up pace, there is motion in the motorcycle that will happen. The goal is to just, um, you know, allow it to move, allow it to wiggle underneath you and to trust the tires and trust your bike and to be light. If you're light on your inputs, like I learned in this last weekend, to kind of tweak my uh, wrist out a little bit and carry with my, my chest, if you're light with your inputs, um, the whole thing, even though it's moving, it, it'll move underneath you and it's this whole kind of dance. Um, for me, the, the dance that I'm kind of learning of, the kind of, you know, the level two Samba, if you want to call it, is uh, trailing it hard into a corner as it's wiggling underneath you. And the balancing act of just slightly letting that go all the way to the apex and then picking up the throttle. It's so beautiful and, and effortless when done correctly. It just kind of floats out there and you get to pick it up and it goes right up uh, and it works really, really well. The other thing, and you know, this is like such common kind of knowledge, but just a commitment to the throttle, you know, like between those corners, just, just give it gas, you know, go full gas, a hundred percent when you can and hold it as long as you can and then break as late as you can. Stitching that together throughout the whole course and not, you know, pussyfooting around or letting up at any point is really how you start picking up the pace, at least it has been for me. So really, really helpful, really, really awesome. Uh, I'm going to go on this last session and go for a 118. I'm hoping I can get a 118.9 would be amazing. And I think I know where to get it, that back crossover section. I think I can carry through a little bit more speed there and find that uh, 5 tenths of a second. Uh, so yeah, let's see if we can do it. And I will show you this final lap and bid you adieu. And just like that, my GoPro died at the end and I couldn't record my final session, but rest assured, I did not go any faster. I repeated my result and clocked in another 119.7. And honestly, sometimes repeatability and consistency is better than an all out fastest lap. At the end of the day, no one is turning into the next MotoGP star here. Nobody is racing because sponsorships are on the line or contracts up for renewal. This is pure fun and I am unbelievably fortunate to be able to take my recreational riding so seriously and have this much fun with it, even at the club racing level. It is a wonderful gift to be able to ride motorcycles, and when you realize what they're actually capable of, they'll show you what you're capable of. Because for as fast as any motorcycle can be, it's only as fast as the rider makes it go. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what we do here, go to yamynoob.co and sign up to join our community, get entered to win free motorcycles, and access the best Discord that motorcycling has to offer. I'll see you on the next one.